Guten Tag, ladies and gentlemen. German name 1990 here once again. Happy 4th of July to my fellow Americans. And here's what I have to show everyone uh, to start off the 4th of July. Back on April 5th, I went to see my favorite rock band perform up in Milwaukee. And I got some shirts for them. I bought a whole bunch of shirts for, for attending the event. I even bought myself an autographed poster. I've been listening to Bon Jovi now. Um, I've been listening to Bon Jovi since late December of 08. He's got some awesome music. Uh, very inspirational. And uh, he is a fellow American. And I have the same birthday as him. I'm not kidding when I say this, ladies and gentlemen. I was born the exact same day that Bon Jovi turned 28. So we were 28 years apart from one another, so I uh, was really excited just to see him perform. If there was one concert that I was going to go to my entire life, a Bon Jovi concert would have definitely been it. So um, I remember I was supposed to see him perform a couple years ago. Um, he was supposed to perform along with Brian Adams, who was another fantastic artist. Unfortunately, COVID put a... Uh, basically put those plans to rest pretty quickly. Um, although I didn't see Brian Adams, seeing Brian Adams along with, along with Bon Jovi would have been like killing two birds with one stone. But uh, the Bon Jovi was really the guy I wanted to see, and I'm very, very happy that I got to see him. And uh, ultimately, COVID was unable to keep me from seeing him perform so I feel really happy just to have seen uh, my fellow birthday boy perform in front of thousands of people so here's some other stuff that's been going on oh and yes yes um the day after i saw bon jovi i went to see the sonic 2 film premiere um here here in chicago on the north uh Right here in Chicago, it was actually on the north side at this theater called the Regal City North. And I went to see the Sonic 2 film premiere with a whole bunch of Sonic fans. And I remember there was just so much fan service in that film that it was very difficult to keep the theater quiet. So which leads me to do some Sega stuff here. Let me get these out of the way. Back on the 30th, I got these two... I, um, a few weeks ago, I subscribed to a British magazine called Sega Powered, and this is their second issue and their third issue. I couldn't get their first issue. On, uh, I was able to get their first issue, but it was only a digital version of it. But uh, getting the getting these uh, were really getting these were just great. This one came with a postcard, which was nice. And here's something else that came uh, about a week ago. This was uh, Amy Rose. This was an unofficial Amy Rose figure that someone put online. I said, oh, let's see if I can get her. Have that a nice, fine addition to my Amy Rose collection. You can see my Amy Rose collection over at Instagram. Uh, so let me do this. One of the nice things about it, you put this, there's a button right here. You press that. And... She lights up. There we go. Now that leads me to the main part of the video. As I was telling you last week, uh, no, uh, pardon me, a week and a half ago, I was opening up those blind box figures and the Amy Rose figure arrived complete. Well, right after shooting the video, I went to eBay and I went to went to see if I could find any of these Build-A-Box Craftables figures. So, it arrived, um, it arrived back on the 29th, so we're going to see, and in case you're wondering what the duct tape is all about, that's really just to censor everything. I respect everyone's privacy. I don't want to show sensitive information such as such as addresses or anything like that. So I'm not gonna, so let's open this up. We're gonna, so we're 
we're gonna open this up. I know it's not the climactic as climactic as we as I really wished it would, but it's something. Here, a little bit of suspense. We're gonna open this up. We're gonna put that open. There we go. All right, now we're gonna open this up and uh, put some more. You gotta tape, yeah, you really gotta tape this really well, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so I see that it's a good pack of material here. Right here. Alright, let's take that out. Now, before I open this up and show everyone, here's what I believe happened. Here is what I believe happened when someone went to this GameStop. It's the only way I can really think of where they got this. So what they must have done was they opened this from the bottom and they took the bag out and they keyed a couple holes in it and they took the Amy figure out, put it in their pocket and basically left the str and put put the bag and the podium and the accessories back in the bag, put the bag on the back on the display case and just put the Amy figure in their pocket and they went out the door undetected. So it's unfortunate. So that's how they opened it. So let's open that. So let's open this up. See maybe this guy did. And hopefully there are no more complications here and Thankfully, there aren't. Here we go. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. I was a little bit concerned that something may have happened, but nope, we got everything here. And everything, there's not a single hole in the bag. This is terrific. So we have the flower, we have the base. Those are the only two things. And then you have Amy's head, you have the, her shirt, her shoes, her skirt, and her trademark hammer. So that's it. She is, this time, not a complication in sight. All right, so we got that. And now we're going to end it off with... And now we're going to end it off with... With some stuff related to America's game. Here we go. This is a very rare Wheel of Fortune pillow plush right here. I got this at a local arcade of mine um, many years ago. I got this back in 96. And I wanted, and there were two sizes. Uh, there was a larger one and there was a smaller one. I was hoping to get the larger one, um, but I ended up getting the smaller one instead. And then shortly after I got it, I was stupid and had a little bit of, put it up next to a light bulb and it caused it to burn some of the material away. And you can also see a lot of the, um, it has aged um, since then. So here there's the wheel side and then there's the I'm a wheel watcher side. Now one of the things that I really find interesting about this, this was based off of the layout that Tyco used in their Wheel of Fortune board games and I do plan on making a review of Tycho's board games because they, they overall did a fine job. I do have a few gripes here and there about those games, but uh, which I'll explain the review. But right now, my board games are in storage right now. Circumstances I'd rather not get into, but this is easily comparable to Tycho's uh, Wheel of Fortune uh, board game layout. One of the things that I always found interesting about it was that... Um, for one, the $750 base was purple. It could have very easily been yellow, just like in the actual Tyco games. And then you have the free spin space. That's also purple. And it has every value um, shown that the Tyco game also has. Again, one of my big gripes about Tyco... One gripe that I can easily agree with when it comes to Tyco's Wheel of Fortune game is that there's no $350 space. This could have very easily been worth $350. Overall, it's still pretty nice. It's a very rare piece of collection. Still very rare. 
Wheel of Fortune collectible to have. I'm still very pleased to have had it. So I'm still keeping that, despite the fact that I finally got, boom, the larger one. It's pretty much the same thing. It's in mint condition. I don't think it was ever taken out of the bag. This was made way back in 1995, ladies and gentlemen, but that's it. Um, this is, I got the larger one at long last. It arrived back on the 24th. It's pretty much the same thing. Still has the tags and everything. It's basically the same thing as this, only not only much larger, but not only is it not only is it much larger, but it's in mint condition. It's uh, this is comparing to night and day. So here's so here's that. Here's the one that I got, and here's the one that's brand spanking new. I don't think I'm ever going to keep this out of the box right now. I want to keep this in fair condition as possible. So, uh, but that is it. I just wanted to make a nice little follow-up video, especially for this, and uh, show everyone what's been happening over the last few months. So, um, I hope everyone enjoyed what you have to say here. And if you did enjoy what you saw, uh, you can also check me out at Instagram.com slash Germany1990 and DeviantArt.com pardon me, deviantart.com slash German name 1990. So if you liked what you saw, please leave a like, hit the red button to subscribe, ring the bell to turn on notifications, and uh, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys again soon. Auf Wiedersehen.